Hello the internet, my name is Dean and welcome back to another Ruby on Rails tutorial. Today we're going to be covering deleting comments, but before we get into that, I just want to ask how the audio levels are. I just upgraded from my Blue Yeti to a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that I have for my DSLR, but I'm also using it to record these because it's lower profile and it just kind of sits below the camera. So uh, just let me know in the comments what you think of the audio, if it's better now it should be, hopefully and it'll hopefully be more consistent moving forward. But let's go ahead and let's jump into this. So the last time we left off, we had the ability to create comments and we were forced to log in before we could do that. So if I just log in and go back to the page, we'll create a new comment. So that's still working, but now we would like the ability to just delete these if we're the current user that um, posted this comment. So to do that, we're gonna start by changing our routes. So we'll go into config and routes.rb, and we wanna change this from the post comments to be the resources for the comments. But when you normally do this, uh, you generate all of the resources, but since we only have two actions right now, we're just gonna say only the create and the destroy action. So then we can get rid of this first one. I'll just comment it out. Leave it like that. And we can save this and close this file. The next thing we're gonna do is come into our views and our comments and our comment.html. And this is what the code looked like before. So you have the created at, which is this little bit right here. You have the uh, comment.user.username, which is this, and then the body of the comment. So we're gonna change this up quite a bit because we need, first we need a way to access this from our uh, destroy.js.erb if we wanna do this remotely. So for that, we'll have to give this an ID and we'll set this to be equal to the comment hyphen comment ID. So then like your first comment on a post will be div ID equal to comment dash like one and so on. So we can save that and close off this div and close it off down here. So now if we refresh the page and hit F12, we should be able to grab the comments by their specific ID. So here you can see this is the 15th one we've created. So that's good, but now let's go ahead and let's style this a bit more to make it a bit more readable. So we'll start with, um, I guess the created ad again, and then below that we'll do the comment username, but we'll get rid of the colon and we'll just kind of move this around. So we'll say comment.user.username, and then I think here I do a check to see if the current user is online, and then we will wrap that around the uh, delete method, and then after that we will then say we want the comment body. So we'll just do it right here. So then we'll say percent end, and then we'll do the rest in here. So inside of this we just want a link to the delete. We'll then say post comment path and we'll pass in the at post and the comment. And the reason we're doing this, if I just kill the server real quick, if we type rails routes into our uh, terminal and hit enter, you can see the routes that it generates for us when we switch the uh, routes to be the resources. So here we have the uh, comments create action and the comments destroy action, but the actual path for it is post comment. And after all of these, you add path. Like for the root, it's always root underscore path. Here it'll be post comments underscore path. And here it's post underscore comment um, because it's a specific comment. And here it's saying that we need to do the slash posts and then the post ID and then comments and the comment ID. So that's why we're specifically passing in the um, at post and the comment because we need to have this so we satisfy the slash post slash two. And we need this so that we can satisfy the slash comments slash whatever. So after this, I then have um, a, we need a method for delete because as we covered before, if you don't have this delete method in your link, it won't actually delete it. It'll just try to do a get request for that link. And that's not really helpful. And we also want a remote true. If you don't have the remote true, then it won't call the JavaScript to delete the comment without refreshing. You'll then have to refresh the page and we're trying to avoid that. And then finally we'll do style and we'll say float right. 
So once all that's done, we'll then add in an HR tag right there. And we'll then have the comment body. And then I think I just have two BR tags here. And then of course we can indent all of this as we like. So now if we restart the server, uh, Rails S, we should be able to refresh the page and hopefully it'll have the changes. So yeah, this isn't the most stylistic of changes, but you can see what I'm going for. You have the comment and then you have a delete button on the far right. Now, unfortunately with this, if we were to open up a new tab and go to localhost port 3000 in incognito, we'll create a new account and we'll say test at case.com with a password of password. Now, if I go in here, I can actually delete all of these comments. If I'm not signed in, so if I sign out and I look at these, I don't see the delete link. So that's working. But we need to make sure that we're only allowing the user that created the comment the ability to delete it. So in order to do this, after we check if the user signed in, we then need to say, and the current underscore user is equal to the comment dot user. And that's the same user that we're using to grab this username. So it'll be, um, it's obviously working already. So we can just add in this additional check. And now if I refresh the page, you'll no longer see those links and you won't see the HR associated with them. Um, let's maybe grab this and throw it after the comment body. No, before the comment body, what am I doing? Like that. So now it'll still uh, have the proper formatting and you could probably change this up quite a bit. This is just kind of a rough example that I threw together for the purposes. It's a bit contrived, but you get the idea. So now we're checking that the correct user is signed in. And if you were to do something like add in a um, admin Boolean for the users, so I guess we could do that real quick. We'll do Rails G migration, add admin to users, and we'll just say admin Boolean. And then we can come into our DB and our migrations, and we'll look at the last migration, which is this one. And we'll just say default is false. Rails DB colon migrate. And then we'll have to open up our Rails console. Rails C. And we'll just say at user equals user dot first, at user dot admin equals true, at user dot save. And we could say at user equals user dot last at user dot admin equals false at user dot save and then we can hit control d to leave the console and then we'll say rails s again so what we can do with this admin is we can say if you're if you're signed in and if you're the current user then allow the delete link or if current underscore user dot admin which will then give the admin the ability to, to delete any comments that are created. So if we go back to localhost port 3000, we'll sign in to our test at case.com account, go to the show page, we'll create a new comment. We'll just say, um, and admin can delete this. So we'll create that comment and we'll refresh this page. Um, and that didn't work. Current user dot admin. Did I set it to true or did I set it to false? Rails C at user equals user dot first at user dot admin is false. Okay, so set this to true and then at user dot save. It helps if you do these things correctly, obviously. And then we'll start the server again and refresh the page and hopefully this will work. So yeah, now if we refresh, it's working as expected and we can just pop over to here. So. This user can delete their own post. They can't delete another user's posts. So like if I just create a new reply here, I can't delete that, but the admin account can delete all of this. And you could also do something where you specifically add a migration to like the post and you say like the, well, I guess, do we have that association? I don't think we set it up. So if the post is owned by a user, you could also check which user owns the post and then do something like, or um, I guess at post dot creator equals current underscore user, something like that so that the creator of the post is able to delete comments as well. But for now, that's good enough. We actually need to make these delete links do something. 
And for this, we need to come into the controllers and the comments controller. We need to create a new action in here. And for this, we'll just say def destroy. And, and we need to say at comment equals at post dot comments dot find. And we need to find by the params and the ID. And then we need to say at comment dot destroy. Now I have run into a bug with this before, which was for some reason it wasn't, um, it would destroy the comment. And then when we go into our destroy.js, it no longer had a reference to the comments ID. But now for some reason it's working again. So I don't know if that was just specific to something I did in that one setup, but I, I think we're just gonna do it this way for now. But if this throws an error and it says nil in your destroy, then what you can do is before you destroy the comment, just say at comment ID equals at comment dot ID. And then in our destroy, which we'll create right now, uh, so we'll say new file and then we'll say destroy dot JS dot ERB. In here, you would then do, um, cause we need to grab the comment and we need to grab the ID, which is equal to at comment dot ID. And then we'll set the dot HTML to be empty. So right now this will delete it. So if we refresh the page, this should hopefully work. So if I come here and I delete this first one, yeah, so it's deleting that properly. But in the event that that doesn't work and you have to use the at comment ID, you can just change this in here to be at comment underscore ID and it'll work just the same. But I don't think you should run into that issue. I, I'm assuming I just did something wrong that time. Um, but this should work as far as I'm aware. I don't really see anything else that I need to cover with this one. Um, I guess in the next tutorial we'll cover editing the comment, so we'll probably create a form below the comment if you hit edit that'll let you edit it. And maybe we'll look into doing something like a edit history. But for now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.